So in general, diets that tend to be more plant-based tend to be healthier for the heart. Even our societies are starting to recognize that um, the promotion of plant-based eating is going to be beneficial for our patients for their health. This is from the American College of Cardiology. This is a handout for patients to advise them as to how they should be structuring their plates. And they do talk about specifically vegetarian and vegan diets as reasonable options. But again, if you look at the plate, the plate is mostly fruits and vegetables. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about blood pressure. Um, blood pressure is an important thing to talk about because it's so prevalent and it is an important risk factor for heart attack and stroke. So high blood pressure or hypertension is a blood pressure that is consistently over 130 over 80. Now, nearly half of all Americans have hypertension. Hypertension is known as the silent killer because you can be walking around with a very high blood pressure and not even know it, but that high blood pressure is increasing your risk of heart attack and stroke because it is causing changes inside of your body. Now, what is a blood pressure? The blood pressure is a measurement of the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. The systolic is the top number, it's the highest number of the two, and it is a measure of the maximal pressure in the arteries during a heartbeat. The diastolic blood pressure is the bottom number. It is the lowest pressure between heartbeats when the heart is more relaxed. Now, the consequences of uncontrolled hypertension, there are many consequences. So heart attack and stroke, definitely um, vision loss because high blood pressure causes changes within the eyes, kidney disease or kidney failure because high blood pressure does cause changes to how the kidneys function. Congestive heart failure can also be a consequence of uncontrolled high blood pressure and sexual dysfunction, particularly in, in men, the inability to get an adequate erection with sexual activity. This is a public service announcement from the American Heart Association, um, just to demonstrate that this is what high blood pressure looks like. You don't necessarily see see your blood pressure being high, but it has consequences and it can cause things like in this woman's case, unfortunately, a stroke. And this gentleman, his uncontrolled blood pressure was a factor in his coronary artery disease. And he's demonstrating a scar on his chest wall, presumably from a coronary bypass surgery. Risk factors for high blood pressure or hypertension are very similar to the risk factors for heart disease. Um, smoking, poor diet choices, diabetes, family history, high cholesterol, age, because as we get older, our, our blood pressure does go up in general with stiffening of the arteries. Um, high cholesterol raises blood pressure, um, weight, the heavier you are, the higher your blood pressure may be. Not being active, a sedentary lifestyle definitely raises the blood pressure. Exercise lowers the blood pressure. Salt or sodium consumption raises blood pressure. Alcohol consumption raises blood pressure, and so does stress. So how is blood pressure taken? Now, you're accustomed to being in, in, in a doctor's office and you have a cuff, cuff put on your arm. So the cuff is wrapped around the, the upper arm and it is inflated with air and it is inflated to a pressure that is higher than what is in the artery. And then it, the blood pressure is, the cuff is gradually released. And the point at which a stethoscope starts hearing a heartbeat, that is what the systolic or top blood pressure is. So the cuff is causing you to hear beats because it's basically causing the flow through there to be turbulent because of the pressure. Once the cuff is deflated beyond below the diastolic or, or lowest blush, blood pressure in the arteries, you will cease hearing any noises. Now, how to get an accurate blood pressure reading. And unfortunately, this is not what's done in a lot of doctor's offices. So you should be seated in a comfortable chair, feet flat on the floor, back against the back of the chair, relaxed, having emptied your bladder, um, 
legs uncrossed, feet supported on the floor, the arms supported at heart level, the arm, the cuff on a bare arm, and no talking. And having rested in that chair for at least a few minutes before the blood pressure was checked. Now, when measuring a blood pressure at home, it is preferable to use an arm cup, cup that goes over the upper arm as opposed to a cup that goes around the wrist. How often should you check your blood pressure? My answer would be no more than twice in a day. Once you get beyond that, you're just making yourself crazy and it ceases to be productive. Um, don't check blood pressure when first waking up. Don't check blood pressure at night. Don't check your blood pressure when you're anxious or upset. Um, avoid food, or caffeine, alcohol, or tobacco for about 30 minutes around the time that the blood pressure is checked. Sit quietly. Make sure that the cuff is something that is accurate. If you have a home blood pressure cuff, at some point you should probably take it to your doctor's office and just make sure that it correlates with the blood pressure that they're getting there. Now, home blood pressure in general will typically be five points lower than in the doctor's office. But that said, there's a subset of the population who have what we call white coat hypertension and their blood pressure is significantly higher in the doctor's office than it is in their home setting. Now, there are several categories of blood pressure. Normal would be somebody who naturally without medication has a systolic blood pressure that's less than 120 and a diastolic blood pressure that's less than 80. Elevated is considered to be a systolic blood pressure of 120 to 129 with a diastolic less than 80. High blood pressure or stage one hypertension would be a systolic blood pressure of 130 to 139 over or a diastolic of 80 to 89. Now stage two hypertension would be a systolic blood pressure of 140 or higher with a diastolic of 90 or higher. Now a hypertensive crisis would be a blood pressure systolic that's higher than 180 and or a diastolic blood pressure that's higher than 120. Now, white coat hypertension, I briefly talked about this. Now, office blood pressures um, that are higher than 130 over 80, but with out-of-office readings that tend to be less than that. So before you accept the diagnosis of hypertension based on your blood pressures in the office, make sure you've checked your blood pressure outside of the doctor's office on several occasions. Now, how do we treat high blood pressure? Lifestyle is always the first line of therapy. Um, diet, so low, a diet that's lower in sodium, less than 2,300 milligrams daily. Getting enough exercise, 150 to 250 minutes a week of aerobic exercise, weight control, um, a more plant-based diet, less sweets, sugary beverages, red meat, saturated and trans fats, quitting smoking and minimizing alcohol. Now, diet definitely has an impact on blood pressure. So this is looking at the odds ratio for high blood pressure by dietary pattern. So those who are meat eaters tend to be the most likely to have high blood pressure. Those who are semi-vegetarians, slightly less likely. Vegetarians, less likely. Vegans, the least likely to have elevated blood pressure. In addition, there are definitely proven interventions for lowering blood pressure. This is from the National Institutes for Health. Um, and there are a number of interventions with lifestyle and they each have a significant impact. So weight loss, um, if you lose one kilogram of body weight or about 2.2 pounds, you can expect a one millimeter mercury drop in your blood pressure. So for somebody with high blood pressure, we can anticipate that weight loss will lead to on average about a five millimeter of mercury drop in blood pressure. A healthy diet, particularly what we call the DASH diet, which is a, a diet that is designed for blood pressure, lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains. And we'll talk a little bit more about this diet. Um, making a diet change from a much less healthy diet can lower the blood pressure by up to 11 points reducing diet sodium, 
and consuming more potassium can also significantly lower the blood pressure. Other interventions, physical activity, whether that be aerobic exercise or resistance training, both are potent in lowering blood pressure and moderation in alcohol intake. If you're somebody who consumes several alcoholic beverages per week, if you cut back to less than one drink per day, you can significantly lower your blood pressure. Now, back in the day, before there was um, blood pressure medication, there was Dr. Walter Kempner's rice diet. So in the early 1940s, there were no medications available to treat high blood pressure. So he came up with this diet that is pretty radical and restrictive. It was white rice, fruit, juice, and sugar. And that was it when initially starting to treat patients with blood pressure. So most patients who consumed this rice diet saw a drastic improvement in their blood pressure. They also had a massive amount of weight loss, their cholesterol lowered, their heart size decreased, and they had less damage to their eyes or retinopathy from their, their high blood pressure. So what's in a rice diet? So the diet is almost entirely rice and fruit. It had about four to 5% of its content from protein, two to 3% from fat, only 150 milligrams of sodium. And on this diet, exercise was encouraged. So this is a chart of one patient who started the diet. And he was a 51 year old man who had heart disease and high blood pressure and eye changes from blood pressure. He came into this with a blood pressure of about 198 over 122. He then started on the rice diet and both his systolic and his diastolic blood pressures came down. So he was at 130 over about 85 on just dietary intervention alone. Um, these are a couple of pictures of before and after the rice diet. Now, just to be clear in the current day and age, the Walter Kempner rice diet is not an appropriate treatment for hypertension for many reasons, um, mainly that the nu nutrient content of his diet is not something that is sustainable long-term for health. It's, it's very, very low in protein, very, very low in many nutrients. So not a treatment that we use in this day and age, but back in the day in the 1940s, when we had nothing else to lower blood pressure, it, had some role.